Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Easy VR Shield 3 voice recognition shield with your Arduino Uno. I'm going to discuss how to use this software to upload commands and WAV files. I'm going to also uh, talk about how to create new WAV files and then upload them to the board. And then I'm also finally going to discuss how to generate code that has those pre-coded WAV files and groups and uh, labels and commands to an, an Arduino INO sketch file, a generic template that is saved on your desktop that you can edit and then get the commands, the voice commands to actually control the UNO uh, pins and ports and that sort of thing to turn LEDs on and that sort of thing. So let's start out there. Let me show you how this whole little board works um, with an example that I created, um, which is pretty easy. Um, I want to let you know that you first, if you'll notice right here, I have two Arduino versions. Um, and basically, I'm using 1.6.5. That's a newer one. I think 1.6.7 is the newest. Um, but uh, I was using the enhanced release for Windows 1.0.5. And when I tried to use the code that it generated or load the files that it generated, um, I got a compiler error message that specifically said, update your IDE to a more current version. So you have to have a pretty current version for this to work. That's one of the negatives. But all in all, very cool. There's a little manual that you can print out or uh, use as a PDF for all the different commands. Um, let me see, that actually shut down. Let's open that again. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'll show you how I can, there's a trigger word you have to give it. And let's go ahead and try that now that turns it on. My trigger word is LED, and that's in group zero. LED. LED. And see, came on, it made a tone. Now it's in group one, waiting for, and I said on, it heard my voice. On, so it went on twice. Off. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? On. Off. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? So you get kind of an idea how you can control an LED with your voice and custom commands and responses. So let's um, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual device, the actual module. Uh, it comes in two parts, two basic parts. This part right here is the shield, and this part is the module. Uh, you can buy just the module. And you can do your own development work, which is a lot trickier because you have to use software serial and it's a little bit more involved. Uh, I bought the whole shield. That's what you see here. Uh, you basically solder these little pins here onto the module and then the module plugs into the shield and you solder it on the shield. And then on top of the, the, the sides of the shield, you have these larger pass-through female male uh, headers that allow you to uh, you know, use your Uno and plug in the pins and get access to the pins below. However, all that soldering is kind of a pain. And uh, um, I recommend uh, this little device. Made it very easy. Um, it's right here. It's called the Benzomatic um, uh, Microbutane Torch. It uh, looks like this. Real simple. You fill it from the back. Um, it comes with a little stand that holds it upright like that, so when you put it down, it doesn't burn anything. You turn it on, and then you, uh, you access a little hole there, and you light it through there, and it catches on fire. You close that down, let it heat up. You're good to solder. So this actually, for 12 bucks I bought locally, is a great little deal, and I highly recommend it. Um, you buy the uh, butane here that comes with it, and uh, um, it's a couple extra bucks, but I hardly used any butane to do all that soldering, I got a ton left, it'll last forever. So it was a great little gig, yeah, it's a nice little toy. Um, so back to the shield, you have to do all the, all the soldering and that sort of thing. So once you got it all soldered and you got it all put together, let's talk about how um, 
you actually use the code that you have to download, and that is called uh, Easy VR Commander, and that's what this is. Uh, this is version 3.9.3. I think there's a 3.10 now. I, I still use this one, so maybe I'll upgrade. But nonetheless, what's important are these little command buttons across the top. And the first thing you do is um, you need to find your COM port right here. And I'm COM5. And what, uh, what you can do then is, it, it, these are your trigger words. It comes with robot, I added LED, and that's what turned it on initially. Then I created in the group, uh, something called group one, uh, a command called on and a command called off. You have all these other groups you can create. I haven't done it yet. Um, and then you can also create your own sound table. And so these are all sounds that I have created. There's about 60 of them for another project. And you can click on uh, one of them, like right here. And, um, oh, I can't play because I need to connect. So uh, let's connect. So right now we're going to connect to it. And you connect to it. And the green light comes on. And now you are connected from the commander to the module. And when you do that, you need to make sure that the, the switch the pin back here, the header pin, is in the SW pin set, which is the first pin set uh, for software. Um, that's the, the, the command, that's the pin set that it has to be in in order to change these. There's another pin set called upload, and uh, that's UP up here for uploading sound files, but we'll talk about that later. But again, let's do, I'll show a little cutaway here of the sound wave or the SW software pin header right here. Okay, now that you've seen that, um, let's show how you can create different commands. Um, the trigger turns on the listening. Or else it just sits there and does nothing until you say a trigger word. Robot comes with it, but I, I, tr I have the trigger word LED. Um, for instance, we can go um, right here and test the group. You click test and it says speak now. LED. Flashes green. Test it again. Robot. And the robot flashes green. So that's how it knows. So here we have a group. I created on and off. Uh, we can test the group on. We'll test it again. Off. Oh, I thought, see, I'm too far away. Let's try that again. Off. No, nope, it's not. I'm not standing in front of it. So obviously the off command needs to be retrained, but basically off. There you go. So you gotta be right in front of it. It's a it's kind of directionally challenged. You gotta really talk straight into it. I'm actually talking off to the side. But let's do this. Let's train a new one. So you go across the top here and um, you can insert a command, add a, add a command. We'll call this one um, uh, YouTube. YouTube. And I'm going to train it from the side here so it should pick it up. And there's different distances. You can have it right by your mouth, a foot away, three feet away. I have it about three feet away, and that's set up here in, um, uh, let's see, where is it? Configure IO pins, play sound tone. Um, maybe it's configure, nope, that's IO pins. Reset all. Uh, recognition settings, here it is. Easy, loose, and here it is, far away mic. And so max three meters, otherwise it's one meter. So let's go ahead and do YouTube, let's train it. Um, you go across the top, and it's right here. Um, uh, where is it? I can't read it. There. Train command. And it'll come up twice. Phase one. YouTube. We'll do it again. YouTube. There we go. And it said trained two. So now let's, uh, let's test that group. On. That looks good. YouTube. 
and that did well. But you don't have to call it YouTube. You can call it anything you want. Let's um, erase the training, It'll, and let's train it again here at um, train, which is kind of a grayed out thing. It's hard to tell if it's actually active. Train command. We'll train it again. Pluto. Pluto. Okay. So now it did it twice. Let's test. Let's test it. YouTube. Nope. YouTube. See, doesn't find it. So let's try this. Pluto. There, it found it. So, yeah, pretty good. So it's when you train it at the right distance, and if you're consistent and in a quiet room, it it works actually quite well. So I'm going to delete um, uh, this um, command. Actually, remove command. Yes, because I don't want to keep YouTube. So that's how you train these. And these are now, since this is connected, and this is in the software mode pin over here, it is now training that board. This is now uh, on that board, the, the on-off uh, command and the, the trigger commands. Um, now that's different than the sound tables. You actually have to be um, disconnected and you upload uh, uh, right here where it says update custom data. You have to update. I'm going to show you how to do that later here in the video. Um, but what is kind of nice is uh, now that you've trained a, a trigger and a group and maybe you want a password and, and you want to use some of these pre-made uh, work um, um, word sets, um, it will, the, one of the more, most important aspects of this, of this commander is this button right here where it says generate code. And what it will do is it will take your personal triggers that you've created and your and uh, access to your WAV files that you created, which I will show you later, like I said. And it will create um, an INO file, an Arduino sketch INO file. So let's put this on the desktop and let's call this U YouTube. And now it just created a template. So let's put this away, and there it is right there. That's the, so, that's the sketch that that commander just generated. And that sketch will allow you to change the sketch so that you can edit and have an LED turn on, turn on a motor, turn on a light, whatever you want, just like any other Arduino device that you want to connect to. So. <clears throat> Here we open the sketch, and you, like I said earlier, you have to do 1.6. something. Uh, we do file, we do open, we do desktop, and um, we got to find YouTube somewhere here. Ah, here it is, the next one over. YouTube. We open that up. It needs to be in a file, in a folder, of course, and there it is. We've got. That's, this is what it generated, and it's just a generic file, and I talk about more about this code in, in, my, um, in this video at the end. But basically, it comes down here, it defines your groups. You have a group zero, you have a group one zero, or, or uh, group one on off, um, all of this. And it comes down here, and in the middle of the code, which I did not know, and I have not found any other videos on YouTube, uh, or anywhere really talking about it, is it has little comments that says right here, you can put processing while waiting for a spoken command here. You can um, change the group here. And there are comments, and so what you do is remove the comments and you go ahead and put your own code in. Um, else, there's a timeout error you can trap for. Um, here, you write your action code here, and then you can go to a different group here if you want. And so it tells you how to, how to change groups. Like you can have group one do one thing, you know, LED on, and then it would go to group two, which would say, what color LED do you want on? And you could say red, blue, or green. And you know, you could do all sorts of things and then have error codes. So basically <clears throat> here I have, you know, my on and my off, <coughs> excuse me. And um, in my code that I show at the end of the video, I put right in here, digital write high, and uh, or digital write low, and I do a digital write high here, and it turns it on and turns it off, and that's how it works. So it's really pretty straightforward and pretty simple. 
So that being said, um, I want to go back to the commander here and I'm going to uh, disconnect and this is going to go away. So now we're running off the Arduino and it's going to make noise all day long. But um, what I want to do now is show you how to use this button, which is the second from left. This generated the code. This one allows you to update custom data, which is very important. This is where you update your, your wave files. For instance, number 10, if we hit uh, play, I think that'll play. Um, no, let's see. Let me, oh, let's do that again. Commander. Um, bu 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 that actually crashed. I got so many things going that I think it, it crashed a little bit. So we'll connect again. And um, I just want to show you some of the WAV files. I think it'll, oh, it's not coming on here. Um, let's see if I choose number. Number 10. Hello, please say a command. Number 11. I can play. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? So those are some error commands I, I put in there. Um, I also have a simple command like this one I created using another program. Number zero. Number zero. How, how uneventful is that? So um, basically, Hello, it's coming back on. What I want to do is I want to show you how to bring in your own WAV files. So to do that, we um, I'll iconize this. And the first thing you need to know about is a program called Sound Recorder. And I use Sound Recorder to record um, video, uh, record audio. Um, you just hit it's part of your 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 system and you just hit record and you talk and then you hit stop. And I, I think you can play it back. Record and you talk and then you hit, yeah. So that's how it works. Um, what I did was I actually uh, uh, use this in conjunction with another program, which is called Natural Reader Free, which is right here. And this program's a little bit of a memory hog, but it is pretty slick that it's free. And what it's nice is um, in my uh, sketch, I have a bunch of print statements. And in those print statements, I want it to say that through the speaker. So what I did is I took all the print statements and I put them in here one at a time. And I picked a uh, custom uh, voice. And this program comes with Sam, who sounds like a robot. It's really bad. But you can download these other two, Heather and Ryan, which are much better, higher frequency, and they're free, so I downloaded them. So if you hit play, whatever you type will get highlighted, and then it will actually say, Please say a command. It'll say what you type. And, and you can change it. You just put your cursor there, type the word, say, now, and you hit play. Please say a command now. And so what I did was I used... Um, the micro, the, the speaker here, and a microphone, and I use that. I hit play, and I would record it on uh, this program, the sound recorder. I would record it right here, and then you would get. And you talk, and then you. And you would get the file. So, um, what's nice about this is, um, when you save the file, you do uh, file, save as. Um, you can convert it right down here. Right down here, you convert it. So we're going to call this YouTube. YouTube. I'm going to save it. Um, let me delete this one. And I'm going to save it um, on the desktop. But I'm going to change the output of the file. I'm going to change the attributes of the file, the actual file wave structure, the wave file structure. Um, the module here, the EZVR Shield, actually prefers to have it 8 kilohertz, 16 bit mono, 15 uh, uh, 15,000 uh, bits per second, 15k bits per second. That's the default ideal. You get the most memory, you get the best sound. That's what I used. The manual, you can go into changing it any way you want. 
if you have a better speaker here, better eight ohm speaker, you can do a whole lot of things. Um, so um, I recommend doing, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. So I'll just say, okay, here, um, close this down, close that down. No, I don't want to save it. <clears throat> now, um, there's another program um, that, uh, uh, let me go ahead and close this down. I'm going to close these down. These are the sketches. And that's the commander. So basically, there's something called Sensory Quick Synth. And um, to use this is pretty is pretty easy, but it, again, the, the 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 information isn't all that readily available. So okay, so now I'm back with the new software, the Century Quick Synth Five software that comes with it. What's nice about this is um, you create a, a, a wave project. So let's go ahead and try. Um, creating a new wave project. And so basically you do uh, file new and the manual says very specifically, take all the defaults. So we say, okay, and we got to give it a name. So we're going to call it YouTube. YouTube three, that sounds like a good one because I've done this a couple times. Open and it now has a file that it wants to be added. So we say, let's add a wave file. And we'll take that WAV file, say open. You take all the defaults, but you can change the, the compression, but I've never done that, so you can try that if you wish. So we select OK, and it's going to change the name to whatever it wants. Say OK. And now, let's say, and you can add as many files as you want, but in this case, um, I'm just going to add just this one. And the key to this is, and it's a multi-step, and it specifically calls it out in the manual, um, you select build, you take the defaults, it's gonna give you an error, you say yes, and it goes through and build, compresses it, and you say okay, and then you say okay. That's the first step. Step number two, you save it. Then you build it again, and you take all the defaults, and you say okay, and then that's it. That's how you build the file. Don't do a download, don't do any compression, don't use any of these other things uh, uh, unless you have to, per se. I mean, uh, you can play the file. Level one. That's all it is. It says level one. Very fancy. But we've created a YouTube 3 QPI or QWP file. So let's, let's get out of this. And let's bring up our um, uh, uh, easy commander. And... Now, right here where it says update custom data, well, the sound table is custom data. All of this is custom data. And in order to update this, another key thing you need to do is you need to go back over to the board, to the module, the EasyVR3 module, and move it from software over to upload. So let's do that now. And when you do that, a little red light will come on in program mode. And I'll show a close-up of this also. So now... So now, that's ready to be uploaded. We go to Upload. We say Import. We go to um, the synthesis, the the uh, sensory directory, uh, C drive, and you go to program files, sensory uh, quick synth projects sample, uh, YouTube three Q QXP file. I don't know what it stands for. We say open. It loads it all here, and typically I don't change anything. I, I just download it to the board. And up here it will change. And now it has downloaded it to the board, but not to the software. So at this point, 
you move it, you move the pin back. to there, the program mode goes away. You reconnect, you'll get a green bar here. And so these were my old sound commands. It's now gonna reread from the board, from the Easy VR3 module. And now you'll see the sound table are only two. And there's sound YouTube three. And what does it say? Level one. There you go. I just changed the sound table or, or to right here to be uh, more in line with uh, some that I created myself using those other wave programs. Um, that concludes, I think, pretty much uh, this, how to use this sensory program, sensory program, and how to use the commander to change sound files, how to create your own triggers, how to generate uh, code so you can actually program the the Uno to do light you know turn a LED on and say commands back. Um, the last thing I want to point out are two things. Uh, one is the manual that actually comes with this. Um, it's a good manual. It's very complete. Um, I printed it out in paper form, but you can definitely use it here. Uh, and all the commands are listed and you can search them and everything else. So that's actually quite nice to have. In addition to that, something else I want to point out um, is uh, this uh, C programming reference la uh, language manual. Um, uh, let me get to the top here. And what it does is it um, offers uh, free C coding. It tells how all the syntax works. Um, and it's free, and it's from Stanford. So you can download it and read it anytime you want. Um, uh, it's called Essential C. Um, it's got just the basics, and it's very complete. So I highly recommend using that. I use that to help solve some of the problems I had with this voice, mod uh, voice recognition uh, library routines and that sort of thing. But you don't need it, but it's nice to have, I think. So um, that pretty much um, uh, answers uh, all the questions I wanted to say, all the, all the things I wanted to do. So in the following uh, portion of this, um, of this sketch, uh, of this uh, video, I'll, just, I'll bring up the sketch and show you the code. So here we are with the code for the Easy VR 3 Shield. And there's a couple things I want to mention before we get started. Um, first off, uh, an issue with uh, running the code that is uh, generated is that it only works with newer versions of the Arduino IDE. Uh, for example, here I have uh, downloaded 1.6.5. I think they have a 1.6.7 now, uh, but um, normally I use the enhanced uh, Windows release uh, 1.0.5. And when I compiled the code that was generated, the template, I got an error message stating flat out, you need to upgrade your, ID your Arduino IDE. So if you're using an older version, you may want to download a newer version of the Arduino IDE and start practicing and seeing if your code compiles in that because each version of the IDE seems to handle certain sketches differently. Um, so the next thing you also need to keep in mind once you compile it, you may get a lot of errors with the library and um, make sure that all your libraries are stored correctly and that you have current versions of the libraries because you'll get a ton of errors when you compile this um, using the IDE. Um, <clears throat> so that being said, I wanna kinda of go through the code here and show you what I've done and what I've found out. Um, uh, it starts out here with an the Arduino H, including that file right there. 
And then it starts making some compares here and some if else statements during the compile. And um, it then sets up software serial ports if it's a different type, if it's a particular type of port. I have mine set up for um, a hardware serial port, and I believe this is what it's going through. And so uh, then it, it loads the easy VR <clears throat> um, library, which allows you to do all the different commands and that sort of thing. And um, I wanted to mention uh, this line right here that I added myself called pragma once. Um, it stops multiple uh, opening of the same .h file. So if you have a, a number of um, libraries that you include, and they include, let's say, uh, the wire.h, and you've already declared the wire.h, this portion of code that I actually got out of that reference manual from Stanford um, is helpful in the fact that it only loads one version of the wire.h. So that may actually solve a lot of your compiler problems with uh, the shield. Uh, then it goes through and defines a, a port here using the easy VR uh, command. And then it defines the groups and the commands. Here's a, a, a groups uh, zero and one. Uh, group zero is group zero underscore LED zero and group one is on and off. And you can see that in uh, my, uh, the trigger, which is LED zero uh, and group zero index zero. So each group has an index and each label inside that index, uh, inside that uh, command or, or description of a command here has an index. So there's actually two indexes. Um, so you gotta kinda keep those straight. Um, so here's the LED and then here's group one with its own uh, index zero and index one for on and off right here. So then we, we uh, assign uh, the group and the index to uh, an integer uh, of eight bits, I believe that's what that stands for there. And uh, then we come down to the setup and here we start um, we initialize the LED uh, pin 11 for output, and then I turn it, I turn it off. Next, I, I set up the PC serial port here, which is um, part of the serial port for the shield, I believe. And then it does some testing here to find out what sort of bridge mode you're in. And um, I haven't fiddled with this at all. I just let it, I think it's normal is what mine uses. Um, this is quite a bit faster uh, port speed, so I don't follow that, but I do get back an error message saying easy VR uh, and is detected, which is down here, and it continues on. Um, if it doesn't detect the easy VR, for instance, if you have the pin on upload mode, uh, you'll get this message, and so then you'll know to jump to change the jumper. So there's some uh, commands that come up here that are um, uh, straightforward here, you know, they all preface with, uh, preface with the easy VR dot and then the actual command. This is a set timeout of five seconds. Um, that command is helpful because what it does is sit there and waits and you, you issue the trigger, which in, in my case uh, is LED and that starts the shield running. Otherwise it'll just sit there and not do anything until you issue that. Once you issue that command, it then waits five seconds for uh, the, the on command or the off command. And you can change this variable from zero, which is infinite. It'll just sit there and wait forever uh, without saying something or giving an error message uh, prompting you to, hello, enter, you know, say some sort of command. Um, I think 31 seconds is as long as it will wait before uh, it, you, you, have, you would probably have to choose the infinity mode. Um, next, here's the uh, language I chose, which is uh, English. So uh, it understands English when I speak it. Um, and then here, you know, here's the easy VR trigger, which is the trigger that starts the whole thing running. And that's, and you can set the, uh, the play sound. Um, uh, which uh, 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 here's the index here, 
um, which says, please, it's a woman's voice saying, uh, asking, please uh, say a command. And that's what it starts off with when you first start up um, the board. And there's different volumes. This is all explained in the manual. And uh, I um, would encourage you to have the manual either printed out and, and, and handy because you do a lot of flipping through it or at least have it um, in your PDF file. And then once you're done, uh, uh, I exit the setup so that I know that I've actually finished the setup and I'm now going into the loop. There is this void action, which I don't really, I'm not really sure how to use that quite yet because there's actually a second void action right down here, uh, right here. And I don't really understand why uh, the first void, a the, the void action doesn't get a duplicate function name, but it doesn't. Um, so I need to experiment with that a little bit. Um, next, you come into the loop, your void loop, which is your standard loop. Um, I give a little notice here saying we're now in that. Um, it does some sort of IO1. There's six IO pins on the edge of the EasyVR. Uh, here it says, sets it to high so that I guess it turns on an LED uh, that flashes for listening. It's kind of nice because then you can tell when it's actually doing something because these modules can run uh, autonomously by themselves and you won't know what's going on unless you have an LED flashing. So uh, that makes it very handy. Um, next, uh, you, you say a command in a group. I put that, I print that to the serial, serial port or the serial monitor and it, um, uh, it starts to recognize a built-in word uh, and and uh, again, it's easy VR dot, and then there's a a, 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 a syntax here you got to follow, and then the group. And uh, what's interesting is the template allows you to do some sort of processing while waiting for a spoken command. So if you don't say the trigger, you could do some other calculations. You could have it run some motors, or if it had some sort of uh, um, uh, eye or, or some sort of camera to watch for motion. You could have it run here and as soon as it detects motion, it could then say, hey, someone is in the house or in the room or nearby. But here you can do some processing and they put that co that comment in there for you. Uh, next, this is the while statement. Uh, once you, something has pulled the status of, uh, and actually you've said the, your trigger word like how I use how, or you can use robot. Um, it then goes in this while statement, and um, these three commands here. Uh, one is for uh, the first one is for distance. Uh, you set the mic distance for sensitivity, uh, or for distance. I mean, uh, one can be right up next to your mouth. One can be about um, a foot away, and one can be over three feet. And I set it for furthest away so it picks up any sort of sound and starts processing it. Next, you set the um, strictness level, um, and uh, I set it for I set it for the weakest so that you can almost say anything and it will trigger it. And lastly, the knob uh, set knob uh, sets the confidence threshold. I think each of the built-in words get assigned some sort of value from like zero to a hundred and um, it's I'm not really sure how it works but it it's basically um, allows it to uh, be only so close to the actual match of a word in your your uh, your, your file here uh, your group file so um, but I think that's all internal so but you can change those and that's in the manual also uh, so here, um, it, it finds one of the words uh, uh, in, in your word index from your, your custom set of grammars. And uh, one of them is robot. I, I took that out because I'm not going to be saying robot. But what it does do is it does give you this bit of code in the template that says uh, if you want to jump to another command. So first you say the trigger word, and then you can go to any group you want. You can go to group one, two, three, up to 16. If you'll notice, there's actually um, group one through 16, or maybe 15 in this case. So you can jump to any group you wish after you give a trigger, and, which is kind of nice. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, I say group one because I'm 
want to check the on or off uh, command. So here it gets another command, and you can if there's an error, it, you can print a debug uh, message here and say, hey, you know, um, the uh, I did not get the word you said. Please say it again, or or whatever, or go to a different command group if you wish. Once you do that, it it um, it sets the training to zero, which I'm not sure what to use there, and the name here to 32. That might be part of the name that you've ass assigned to it that it uh, prints out or stores because it gets the group, the index, the name, and then the training level or training data of a custom command. Um, here I have the group is a 0 through 16 target group in groups. Index is 0 through 31, index of commands within a selected group. And then the name prints to an array of at least 32 characters that holds the command label. Um, Uh, when the function returns. So that's kind of nice to have. So here it prints the name and it comes down through here and again it plays the sound zero in this case it's the um, not the woman's voice but sound zero is a beep and um, um, I think it would it, it played. So there you go that's the sound it plays when it um, gets to here at full volume uh, then it, you can perform some sort of action here if you want. Um, and this is in the template. It prompts you to do this here. Uh, and then you can call an action, which is what I do. Um, and like I said, there's two action function statements. I'm not sure how to access the first one. But anyway, that's to be figured out. Uh, so I call action here. So as soon as I issue a command, I go down to action. And action really could be changed to, um, uh, you know, read LED or turn LED on, turn LED off. But uh, I just leave it at action right now. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's an error. If it doesn't find any of your commands, there's no command. And it's, uh, or it timed out. In this case, the first error uh, times out. And it times out based on that five seconds that I stated above. And if the um, uh, error doesn't time out, it then if the error is greater than zero, meaning it actually came back with a value, you tried to say something and you either too far away or too soft, or there's background noise, it'll say error, it'll give you the error message. And in the manual, there's a series of common error me messages that can help you, uh, and they're in hex. So that prints it out in hex, and you can kind of help you debug what's going on and how to use the microphone at a good distance. And then that's it. We we finish out. We just keep looping, asking questions. You know, please say commands. Light on. You know, LED on, LED off, and that's all you do. And here's the void action. Uh, I now say we're in the action function. Um, and basically, the way the action works, uh, and the way a lot of this kind of works, but to, specifically the action group, is it, it, it's a giant case statement, and you give specific cases based on the commands that you want to give um, here, uh, uh, depending on the index that you read back um, from here, this index right here, or possibly this index here, depending on the group. So it's really controlled by a series of nested case statements. Um, I come in here and I say case group zero. Uh, we switch on the index, the index is zero to one or whatever number you have. And in case uh, the index is uh, uh, the number, uh, it comes back uh, group zero LED, um, you write your action here, it tells what to do, uh, and then you change uh, your group here, or jump to another group, X for uh, composite commands. So once I say, once I say the initial trigger up here of LED, and it comes back here and says, oh, LED, okay, you want to go to group one. And now group one, it'll listen for a command from group one. It'll get the index. And then since this is not uh, group zero anymore, we're now dealing with group one, it'll come down here and on that index, we'll either trigger um, LED, and that, that, let me show you where that is. That's the group one 
right there, group one. And here's the index, zero or one, and depending on what you say, on or off, will return an index. For on, it, and this, it'll come down here, and I turn digital right, pin 11 high, set the LED on, and then I play a little sound that's, that uh, is sound zero, right there, sound zero, full volume. Sound zero, go down to sound. Sound zero is beep. It'll uh, play a beep. And then uh, when I say LED off, <clears throat> it comes down here, sets digital pin 11 low, turn it off. Um, and you can change a group again. You can go to group three, group four, five, wherever you want. You can go back to group zero. Um, it'll then, um, and that, oh, and that, that is actually um, in the template. When you look at it, it'll be there every time you generate new code uh, from the, uh, the, uh, the commander software. But uh, then I uh, issue a play sound, number 11, full volume, and that is uh, uh, this sound, which is level one. Level one. So, um, you know, it's just a different sound. It can be anything you want. And you can have all different sounds and different responses for each and every action you do in your um, action function. So it it's a little tricky, the, the real key uh, to solving all this was the um, generate code uh, command right there. That made it, that actually linked the voice module to the Arduino to do stuff. And uh, uh, then you can play around with all the different sound variables and that sort of thing as you wish. But um, just to get the Arduino to talk and interact with the um, Easy VR3 Sound Shield module. Uh, you have to use. I would say you would have to use this code to start out, just to get an idea of how it works. You can write your own code. You can do it software, serial, and then you know you don't use the shield at all. You just have the little module, and you 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 hook up the pins and communicate it directly using um, uh, characters and that sort of thing. But the shield makes it a lot easier, at least to get started, and um, um, that way I, you can uh, uh, get an idea of what it's like to actually use voice commands and the Arduino. So I hope that this, is, um, this has answered a bunch of questions for you and helps you work with the, um, the Easy VR3 module, uh, a shield. Um, please uh, share these videos with others and, and like them if you like them. Uh, if you want me to respond, uh, please feel free to reply, but include your email, uh, your return email address, because uh, YouTube does not allow me to um, respond in any way. Uh, it doesn't respond with my message. So, with my, it's, it's, and so uh, other than that, I hope this helps. And uh, at the end of this clip, I will have... Um, the wiring schematic uh, fritzing uh, 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 sc screenshot that will show you how to wire it up. It's, fair, it's very easy, actually. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, leave some comments, and thank you for watching.